The Charles View Amphitheater lies on the southern bank of the Charles River in a district of Boston called the Esplanade. It's based on the real-life Edward A. Hatch Memorial Shell, often called the Hatch Shell, which is located in the same area of the Esplanade in Boston. It's a venue for open-air concerts, and the Charles View Amphitheater was likely used for similar concerts. If you bring Curie here, she comments on how she'd love to hear Mozart performed here. But in 2287, the Charles View Amphitheater isn't playing concerts. It is instead home to the Pillars of the Community. The Pillars of the Community has a variety of different leaders depending upon when you discover it in your gameplay. If you discover it before you start doing the Cabot House line of quests, it can be led by either Brother Andrew, Brother James, Brother Simon, or Brother Matthew. However, if you come here during the Emma Jean Takes a Lover quest, you'll find that it is always led by Brother Thomas. As we get close, we find a big bonfire of burning tires in the dirt just in front of the amphitheater. We find initiates and missionaries walking all over the place. Hi. Here to learn about our movement? You're part of a movement? That's right, friend. It's changed my life. And it can change yours. I'm just passing through. Well then, fate must have brought you to us today. This is your chance to change your life. For the better. I'm not interested. Don't be so hasty, neighbor. You should find out how our movement can change your life before you make up your mind. Sure, why not? Brother Simon will be happy to explain what we're all about. Welcome, neighbor. We're always glad to see a new face around here. Tell me something. You ever feel like this whole world is broken? Do you ever wonder why things can't be the way they were in the good old days? Why do you ask? Because if you are that kind of person, you've come to the right place, neighbor. I don't have time for this. You should make time for something this important, neighbor. Something that could change your life, and maybe the whole commonwealth. I've got more important things to worry about. I doubt that, neighbor. What could be more important than transforming your life, and maybe the whole world along with it? The whole world is broken. That's what I used to think, until I found a way to make a difference, to transform my life, and maybe everyone else's too. We call ourselves the Pillars of the Community. We're a pretty new movement, so you may not have heard of us. But we're growing fast all across the Commonwealth, and you can be part of this exciting future. Step right this way, and I'll be happy to tell you all about our movement and how you can be a part of it. What's your movement all about? I'm glad you asked. Our mission is nothing less than to transform the entire Commonwealth one life at a time. Maybe you've seen pictures or heard stories about what life was like back before the Great War. Maybe you've wondered, why can't life be like that again? Well, neighbor, I'm here to tell you that it can be. I'm not looking for a sales pitch. A sales pitch is the last thing I would ever give you. I don't want whatever you're selling. I'm not selling anything, neighbor. I'm giving away the secrets of long life, happiness, and prosperity. Giving them away. What do you say? Ready to take that first step into a new life? You owe it to yourself to give it a chance. I have some more questions first. Of course you do, and I'm here to answer them. Shoot. What if I change my mind after I join? There's absolutely no obligation, but trust me, once you see how your life is transformed, you won't want to leave. Believe it or not, we have never had a single pillar leave after joining. There's not many groups like ours that could make that claim, are there? What do I have to do to join your movement? That's the beauty of it, neighbor. You don't have to do anything, except have a willing spirit and open your heart to the possibilities. I'm not sure. Of course. How could you be sure until you'd experienced it for yourself? Just follow me and we'll get you started on a trial basis. I'm sure once you've seen what we have to offer, You'll be glad you gave it a chance. Not a chance. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I really can't take no for an answer, though. Once you find out all the benefits of being one of the pillars, I think you'll see where I'm coming from. Yes, I am. All right, then. Fantastic. You won't regret it, I promise you. 
Off he runs to a room behind the amphitheater. But before we follow him, we can try to talk with some of the other initiates around here. We quickly learn that all of the initiates sound the same and look the same. Hey. I hope you decide to become one of the pillars of the community. We're always looking for new members. Hello, neighbor. I hope you decide to change your life today. Well, we don't get much from the initiates or the missionaries, so instead we can go back round to the other side of the amphitheater and continue to follow Brother Simon. Don't be shy. Just follow me. Do they have a schedule here? I would love some Mozart. He leads us into a cement brick structure with a desk lying in the middle of the room. I'm always excited to welcome a new member into our fold. All righty. I hope you're as excited as I am. This is one of my favorite parts of the job, getting to welcome new members into our movement. The first step is simple. You have to learn to give up your attachment to material possessions in order to gain the ability to have true wealth, health, and happiness. Just go ahead and give me everything you own, and I'll initiate you as a first-level pillar of the community. Oh, no good can come from this. Uh, all my worldly possessions, huh? What do I get in return for giving you everything I own? You're still stuck in old thinking. You're still clinging to your old life. But that's what you came here to give up. And the first step is to shed yourself of your material possessions. <laughs> You've got to be kidding. You want me to give you everything I have? The first step is the hardest, neighbor. But it's the only way to cast off your old life and start on the road towards your future health, wealth, and happiness. Don't you think that's worth a small temporary sacrifice? Well, I want happiness, and if it takes all my worldly possessions, it's a small price to pay. Here, this is everything I have. Oh, you're really going to... Uh, welcome! You've made a brave step into a bright future. You're now officially a pillar of the community. Do not listen to him. All my readings indicate enlightenment is never so cheaply won. So, here's level one. Repeat this mantra to yourself until you truly believe it. I deserve a better life. A better life is coming. A better life is almost here. Once you truly believe that in your innermost self, you'll be ready for level two. That's when things will really start to happen for you. I deserve a better life. A better life is coming. A better life is almost here. That's it, neighbor. Keep it up, and remember to tell all your friends about us. Hmm. Okay. Uh... Maybe something transformative will happen if we thank this man for all of his help. I just wanted to thank you. Becoming a pillar has changed my life. Oh, uh, thanks. Just keep working on level one and see if good things don't start to happen. I deserve a better life. Am I right? Hmm. Really don't feel any different. When's this supposed to kick in? How will I know when I'm ready for level two? Oh, you'll know. Good things will start to happen. You'll see. You just have to keep working on level one until they do. Right. Okay. Starting to get some severe buyer's remorse now. I can't believe I gave you everything for a stupid self-help mantra. You'll never get to level two with that attitude. Alrighty then. Well, checking my inventory... And it's all gone. My weapons, my armor, my aid, even non-quest items from my miscellaneous tab are all gone. My junk, my weapon mods, even all my ammo. I am stripped bare. I can't even defend myself if I get attacked. How am I going to get all my items back from this guy? Well, this is my stealth character. 
so you'd think I'd have good luck stealing my items back. If you inspect his inventory, you see that he's holding absolutely everything that you had. The problem is that your success percentage is calculated for every single item you have, which means the more items you are carrying, the more chances you have to fail. We might be able to steal back one or two items, but if we try to take them all, he's likely to catch us, which means we don't get any items and he and all the other pillars immediately attack. Fighting these guys naked is going to be very tricky, so before we can defeat them, we got to get our items back, but we can't get our items back without them turning hostile. Ah, oh, we're in a conundrum. Well, maybe we can find something around here to defend ourselves with. There's a locked door directly behind Brother Simon, but I only had a bobby pin. We don't have any bobby pins. That's right, because he took them off of our inventory. So we need to find bobby pins. Going back around to the shell portion of the amphitheater, we see that the pillars of the community were sleeping here. This is also where they kept many of their ill-gotten gains. We find lots of folded up clothing, hats lying around, a table filled with bottle caps and pocket watches, even a mini nuke lying under a bed. But what we want right now are the bobby pins. We can take these bobby pins and then head back to Brother Simon's room to pick the lock on the door behind him. Inside, however, we're disappointed. We find one vial of Radex and one ammo container. None of the other containers have anything else and we don't find any weapons. But, if we go outside, we see a rowboat floating in the water directly behind the amphitheater. Inside the rowboat is a safe that's already unlocked. The contents of this safe may be different from gameplay to gameplay, but in mine, I not only found quite a stack of ammunition, but I also found a pipe pistol. Now, of course, we could always fast travel back to a settlement or to our player home, grab some armor and ammunition, come back and retrieve all of our belongings, but that takes time and who knows what they'll do with our stuff while we're gone. So if we want to take care of the situation now, we can grab this pipe weapon. Now, we did notice those men standing outside the window watching Brother Simon. If we go directly into the room and try to kill Brother Simon, we're going to get caught. But I want to see if there's a way to do this without angering all of the pillars of the community. So making sure that we're hidden, we can try to assassinate one of the missionary guards. What just happened? But no matter how many times I tried to kill these guys from stealth, Brother Simon somehow managed to see it happen. Even though he's in a concrete room, even though I managed to kill them before they could shout, I sadly always alerted them. Now, maybe things would have been different if I had a silencer or used a blade, but sadly this pipe pistol was all I had. So in order to retrieve our belongings, we need to kill Simon as quickly as possible, loot everything we can, and re-equip ourselves before the other pillars can reach us. The only problem is that he has free use of everything on our inventory. He just used one of my railroad stealth boys. So we may need to reload a few saves and try a couple times before we can finally kill him. Once dead, we can quickly loot everything on his body. We can then re-equip ourselves, but all of our favorites have been removed. So we sadly have to reassign all of our weapons and chems to our favorite slots before initiating combat. But if we're quick enough and if we're successful, we are fully armed and ready for when the pillars attack. This isn't what they promised. But let's say that we didn't fall for Brother Simon's scheme. Let's say that we saw through his ploy from the very beginning. Well, if that's the case, we have an entire other dialogue option. A dialogue tree where Brother Simon drops the facade. What if I've changed my mind and don't want to join anymore? No, sorry. I'm afraid we're past that point. You really do need to give me everything. Now. You can't seriously think I'm handing over all my stuff. The world is full of suckers, pal. Just look outside. Every one of them handed over everything they owned in return for... <laughs> well, hope. Sure, it's false hope, but hey, it was worth it to them. You can tell yourself whatever you want, but you're leaving here naked or horizontal. Your choice. You must think I'm an idiot. Well, you came in here, didn't you? Now, you've got two choices. Give me everything you've got, or 
We take it anyway. Now we can respond to his threats by simply giving in. Okay, fine. Here's everything I've got. <sighs> Good choice. Congratulations. You're officially a pillar of the community. Now get the fuck out of my office. I need my stuff back. Or else. There wasn't really a money back guarantee on offer. Sorry. But this puts us in the same boat that we were in previously if we fell for it. We now have to get all of our stuff back from him. Or we can pass a red speech check. I'm walking out of here. Your choice, what you want to do about it. Ah, you're not worth the trouble. Plenty of easier marks. Get out of here before I change my mind. This is the only way to pass through this encounter peacefully. If we pass this check, then every time we come back to Brother Simon or Brother Thomas, whichever leader was here when we talked to them, he wants nothing to do with us. Hey. We don't have anything to talk about. However, if we fail the speech check... I'm walking out of here. Your choice, what you want to do about it. That's not how this works. The entire community turns hostile. But at least we are fully armed, giving us everything we need to defend ourselves. Now the pillars of the community cult, for lack of a better word, there's really no other word that can describe these people, are one of the few factions that we can freely kill without suffering any negative affinity penalties from any companions. Every single companion, even some of the companions that are traditionally a little bit more sentimental, like Curie and Piper, either like it or have no reaction when we kill the pillars of the community, even before they turn hostile. If we come to the amphitheater before we do the Cabot House quests and we kill Brother Simon or whichever leader happens to be here, it doesn't change anything when we do the quest Imogene Takes a Lover. When we come back during that quest, instead we'll find Brother Thomas here so we can safely come here and kill them all before doing the Cabot House quests. I showed you the unique dialogue that we find here during that quest in my video on Cabot House, which you can watch by clicking here. But what's our best option here? What's the right way to approach this? On one hand, they pretty much keep to themselves. They do proselytize a little bit. They send out flyers trying to get more members, but they pretty much just sit here at this amphitheater and keep to themselves. It's not like they're raiders and they actively go out to kidnap, enslave, and kill people. Instead, they act like a spider. They're just as deadly as raiders. They just wait for prey to come to them. Brother Thomas, Simon, Matthew, all of those guys, I think that they're villains and that we shouldn't feel bad by killing them. They're not just confidence tricksters, but they're also murderers. If you refuse to join them, they try to take your belongings by force. That pushes them out of the realm of just mere cultists into the realm of raiders. But what about the initiates and the missionaries, the people that Simon and Thomas successfully convinced into joining their cult? Is it right to kill them? I, for one, feel bad having to massacre all of these guys. Yes, they did turn hostile against me, but they were brainwashed. These poor people came to the Charlesview Amphitheater seeking friendship, companionship, a family, shelter, and hope. And even though Simon is a monster, at the end he is right. It ended up being false hope, but it's false hope that each of these initiates bought. At the end of the day, it was worth it to them to give away all of their personal possessions just to cling to this false hope. As they die, they pathetically say, this isn't what I signed up for. The problem is that they are so brainwashed that they do turn hostile if Thomas turns hostile. They will try to kill you if Simon tries to kill you. And no matter how damaged they are as people, no matter what happened to them to make them that way, at the end of the day, they are hostile and they can be pushed to murder. So therefore they need to be fought. If we never came to the Charlesview Amphitheater, we would never be forced to kill all of the initiates, but they would be able to victimize wastelanders, scavengers, and other people who stumbled upon the community. By coming here and massacring the lot of them, at least we save other people from suffering the same fate as these initiates. We save them from being brainwashed, from losing all of their personal possessions, and we save them from potentially being slaughtered by someone like you someday in the future. Ultimately, I think the sooner we intervene here at the amphitheater, the better it is for everyone. 
But those are just my thoughts. What do you think? Do you think it's more moral to just avoid this place and let these people do what they do? Do you think it's better to show up and give away all your possessions and then walk away peacefully? Or do you agree with me that it's better to get rid of these people and to treat them like raiders to prevent them from harming others in the future? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I read all of your comments and I use your comments as inspiration for my future videos. I publish a new Fallout video six days a week on a wide range of Fallout topics spanning all of the games. So if you want to make sure that you don't miss my next video, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got a t-shirt shop, folks. If you would like an Oxhorn or a Fallout-inspired t-shirt, you can find a link to my shop in the description below. But if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.